Hi, this is Jared from Shunome, and today I want to go over the Shunome Open Template version 23 for ARCHICAD 23. Now, if you've used my previous templates, this one should feel very familiar. There's a bunch of new stuff in it, but in general, the concepts are overall the same. But there's also uh, a lot of changes and updates, so I want to go over some of those. The best way to go about this is I'm going to run through a bunch of the quick options, then we'll go to other things. Um, layers, not much has changed. I've added a couple of things that I realized I needed over time. For instance, a mechanical ductwork layer or separating out the, the fans to their own layer so that they can be turned on and off as necessary. Uh, but in general, concepts are the same. For pens, I've made some very big changes. Um, this is the first time I've really overhauled my pens in maybe four or five years. I'm gonna actually jump to another file to show you what's going on. Um, so here, what we're looking at is what my pens used to look like um, here. And then this is what my pens look like now. So as you can see, this these top two rows have been reworked significantly. Why that is, is if we jump down here to look at the uh, GraphSoft North America ARCHICAD view pens, um, what I've done is merged my old pen set with their pen set, added some logic and got rid of all the garbage. So the way the GraphSoft North America pens are laid out is pens 1 through 20 uh, matter and then the rest less so, but pen number 1 is, you know, cut line, pen number three is door and windows, we got a door swing pen, we've got a uncut, we've got an overhead line. A lot of this stuff um, I had in my old template, but it was just different. So for instance, pen number one in the out of the box pen set is cut line. In my old uh, pen set, pen number 11 was contour lines or cut lines. Um, and so, you know, or for instance, pen number 23 was text, and in the out of the box template, pen number seven is fine marker, the text pen. So I basically, I, I mapped the two and combined them to say, okay, now in my template, pen number seven is text, and pen number one is cut line, and pen number three is doors and windows. I had all those pens in my old template, but they were shifted. So now my pens one through 20 more or less align with pens one through 20 for the ARCHICAD out of the box template, which makes library management much easier. And, uh, you know, so it's, it's going to be a shift for those of us who my, who've used my previous templates, but it's going to make life much better and logical moving forward. Um, the other change you'll see is that there's nothing in the next two rows, and then I've got these black pens and these gray pens. These are basically mimicking what were pens 31 through 35 and, and these 1 through 4. They're just now in a more logical place grouping with, with these other pens that I had. Um, other things to note is pen number 18 is a marker pen for sections elevation, uh, interior elevation detail markers. Pen number 19 is always white. It's a long story, but international library parts use pen number 19 is white and US library parts use 91. So we keep them both white, so there's no problem. And then pen number 20 is a markup pen, which I've added back in. Um, it, for a while I was using this pen number 111 is red for markup and for red stuff, and now I've separated them out. So anyways, that's the big changes of pens. I'm super happy with this change. Uh, it was a pain having to open up every single favorite and rework everything in my template, but I did it and it's done. And now you guys don't have to worry about that. Um, next up, model view options. I went through all these for 23 and updated them, but nothing earth shattering. Uh, my graphic overrides, they're more or less the same, just improved, added some things, added a bunch more rules here. You can 
go through, uh, got stuff set up to make diagrams very easily, uh, more model checking. This fire rating stuff was from the out of the box template. I uh, tweaked it a little bit, but left it in there uh, because it was good and why not leave it there. Another change is this uniform line weights cover fills white and uniform line weights. These two allow any elevation and section to show the building in full color or um, black and white or grayscale behind. I've talked about that in I think a previous video and in my old template, but I've just baked it in to be um, more uh, blanking on the word here to, to be more fundamental to the template. Uh, next up, let's see, I don't think I really did anything different with renovation filters. Those are great. Hopefully you're using my template or if you're not, you know, to have the different types of, you know, existing plan demo, after demo, new construction, but then also to have layer combinations, which show only existing, only demo and only new. These are great for, um, model checking to just flip through them real quick to see if something that shouldn't be new is showing up or you go to your existing plan and you see some new stuff it's really easy to just isolate them all uh, next up is i updated my dimensions and before i had i think site dimensions and i had building dimensions and detail dimensions and that's all kind of my old way of thinking and i finally went through and updated them so now i have quarter inch eighth sixteenth etc and so these aren't specifically for any view it's just how fine-grained the dimension gets. So based on your preferences or based on the view, you select the one you want. So very happy with it. It's very minor, but I like the rigor that this offers the template, that it's, again, moving away from this view has this corresponding project dimension view setting or whatever to this view has this type of dimensions and has this type of graphic overrides and you mix and match them as you need them. Um, let's see, view map, pretty much the way it was, it's cleaner than I had it, but nothing that we really need to talk about. Same thing with the layout book, it's a better version of what was there, but nothing too or shatteringly really different. Uh, let's go to options, property manager. Um, a lot of these custom properties are similar or the same as to what I had in previous versions, but I've just tried to clean them up. There's a lot of new stuff in here because the out of the box template has improved greatly from 22 to 23 and where I could leave it, I left it. Um, what I've also done is set a lot of the things to undefined that aren't necessary for my schedules. So if you open up the property manager, this undefined you can ignore. But this one you want to set because this is the operation type. Again, egress, no, the things that kind of have blanks or something that doesn't have this kind of undefined, you want to pay attention to. I've also rearranged these in order so that the ones that are custom to Shunome, as you can see here, it says Shunome custom property, or just ones that are, you know, valuable to the way the template set up are at the top because you know you can move these up and down as necessary next thing i want to talk about is project info so let's go to file info project info um, huge fan of project info and again i've been using this for a long time so if you're familiar with my templates you've seen this and hopefully you're using it i have a again as the um Kind of overarching concept of this template taken what i used to do cleaned it up rethought it made it more organized and so in here i've had site details before like the gro site gross area because that's an out of the box project info line but then i've also kind of gone through and done all the setbacks and the alley width and the street width and if you have a secondary street name and lot percentage i don't need to read all these for you but i went through and added a bunch of stuff with the site and the same thing with like square footage of the buildings now if you've got a 40 story building this isn't going to work but for my work it's typically a one to two story house with a basement so this is set up for that kind of traditional north american residential you know single family duplex triplex style project 
where all that project info comes into play is in the cover sheet um, where you have all this information here. And if you enter it all in the project info, all this stuff will populate. So you no longer have to click on these and edit all that, but anything that's grade, that can all be added in the project info. So you can sit there one day and just kind of type this all in and you know, okay, this square footage, this square footage, this square footage, I need to update it, et cetera. It all plugs in there. You might have to rearrange these boxes if your numbers are way off because of the um, justification, but hopefully not. A quick note about the red text here. This is um, Seattle specific, so you'll want to update that. And even if you're in the Seattle area, this is a hybrid of our current codes and the codes that will be going into effect. So I have them read not just to remind you to change them, but also to remind me to update them based on our new codes going into effect in a couple of months. Um, so back to the floor plan here. In my previous templates, I've had a little sample building in there. Now I don't have that in this one. Instead, I just have this um, placeholder house model building. Um, and why that's there is if you go to any of the views in the view map, or sorry, the layouts in the layout book or views in the view map, the views all have something to show you. So you know that the view is centered in the right spot. And all you have to do when you're starting to work is select that and hit delete. And the little delete me label goes away because it's a, it's a label that's connected to the element. Um, my plan, and again, we'll see how busy I am in the next couple of weeks, is to do a separate file that has a small sample building in it. And then I'll upload that to my website and someone can download the template and they can download the template file with a sample building in it. That way it's very easy to open the template, delete this little house object and get to work while also having this other file that's going to have tons of references and just modeling techniques. So that's the grand theory there. Um, let's see, with favorites, I have gone through, updated all of mine, added a ton more. Um, the Because this template is built on the out-of-the-box template, I had to slowly strip away all the out-of-the-box template stuff that I didn't like or that conflicted with the way I worked. Um, but there are a few things I left. So for instance, this AC23 out-of-the-box OOTV starting points are a bunch of stairs from the out-of-the-box template. The same thing with uh, railings. These all seemed like really good things. And I wasn't going to go through and update them to make them work perfectly with my template, but I didn't want to delete them because if you need to do a cable rail or you know you want one of these type stairs, these are good things to start from. Now I do have a couple of stairs to work with, but they're nothing special because I don't use the stair tool too much. I stick with building stairs with complex profiles, long topic for another video. Um, and I do have some railings. For instance, I have um, a chain link fence, this wood fence, and a simple wood fence that all use the railing tools, but not to the extent that those samples have. Um, the railing tool is pretty great, by the way, that this wood fence um, is kind of a really simple um, kind of Home Depot fence. I happen to see one outside of my office window right now, and I use that as a go-by, same with this chain link, it's just a simple chain link fence. Um, also in the template, let me jump to another file and show it here, is uh, this is my old template that I used as um, like the working area, uh, is you can use the railing tool to create a rod and shelf. And so I did that and I thought, well, maybe I could include shirts too. And uh, it kind of works, but the corner gets really stupid. So I backed away from that. Um, I experimented with some other things with like including brackets. These are uh, balusters or posts. So it's, it's all doable, but it got a little too clever. Um, and what I ended up with is this is um, a favorite in the template. It's just this rod and shelf. So it's, a, it's the railing tool that has a, a top rail and it has one is a handrail this is an earlier version of it um, and what this allows is really nice 
um, 3D. And in fact, you can go in there and add a second rail or a fourth rail and get double hanging or triple hanging. You can add um, posts at the end to function as end panels. It's super flexible. Maybe someday I'll um, save some of those options and develop it more in the template, but I just want to get it done. Uh, but perhaps the thing I like most about it is the graphics um, in the floor plan. Actually, let me go to the template and show you the final version of it because it's much better than that. So you can just you know, draw it and uh, it comes in. You can see the rod line and the shelf line. Um, turn on true line weight. This line's a little thicker. So for doing closets, quick layouts, you really can't do better or faster than than that so super pleased with that um, along the lines with that the last thing I want to talk about today is um, my shower fixtures so for years I've been using this Archicad 14 shower head I pulled it out of the library I put it into the template and I've been carrying it forward and it's it was ugly, but it was simple, and that's what I needed. Um, the In ArchiCAD 15, Graphsoft replaced that shower head with a more complicated one, which had some cool features, but I just want to show like shower head, nothing else. Um, so long story short, I spent a couple days learning GDL, and I was able to script these. It was a ton of fun. Hope I'll get to do more. Um, what's really neat is this object is actually both shower head options so you can have like a short one for a tub shower and a long one for a stand-up shower same thing you got this like a hydrostatic valve and a, a regular valve uh, and then here's a hand shower that you can change the oh, not five feet that broke it but um, you can change where the um, shower head handle is. Uh, it's kind of silly, but it was fun to learn how to do that. The point being, these are all great fixtures. They're literally the shower fixtures in my house. Um, so I'm pleased to now have them in the template so that when you do a mock-up of a shower, you can show the 3D to the client and it looks you know, more believable. And if you get to the point where you're locating controls and shower heads and hand showers on interior elevations, which is something I'm now insisting on doing, it's so easy because you know this thing you just plop in, you put it in a place, you add a dimension, and you're done. So I think that's where I want to stop for today. Um, hopefully that gave you a good overview of the changes to my template, and you'll all download it and start using it. And of course, if you don't want to use it, just download it and borrow the stuff you like, get inspired by it, see how I did some things. Um, and as always, the template's on my website and you can download it for free. There is also a PayPal button you can click to just send some money my way as a thank you um, for to me for building the template and as a way to say, hey, we support you and continuing to do all this work. It's totally not necessary, um, but I, love it when people click that support button and send me some money through PayPal to say thank you for doing the template. It's so wonderful to um, see that people, when they're given the option to get this template for free, say, hey, I value this enough to you know, send a thank you. So to everyone who has done that and will do that, thank you so much. For everyone who hasn't, that's okay. I just hope you download this and learn and become better ArchiCAD users. That's all I've got for today. Um, thank you so much, and we'll talk to you later.